We've talked. I've talked. You guys haven't talked. This is the top of the show. You don't get to talk. I've talked at the top of the show uh, and during the show about Elliot Spitzer, the former disgraced. You always have to qualify Elliot Spitzer with disgrace. The disgraced former governor of New York State who got mixed up in a prostitution scandal. Hypocrisy was involved when he was state attorney general. He uh, went after prostitution rings and busted people and then he was patronizing high-priced escorts himself. And that came out and he had to resign uh, about a year into his governorship. And he's running for New York City comptroller now. This is part of his whole redemption thing. He had a show on CNN for a while. He had a show on Current for a while. He writes for a lot of different websites and blogs and newspapers. Elliot Spitzer has been redeemed. And of course, my buddy, Anthony Weiner, running for governor of New York. And I've talked about that a lot. I've talked about the fact that we don't want to set a standard that one dirty sex gets out there in the world, one or a couple or a few uh, stupid, ill-advised, dirty, dirty chats online forever disqualifies you from public life and you have to live in shame and never live your apartment ever again. Because if we set that as the standard, we are ruining the lives of all of our children because all of our children are sexing like mad. And we just don't want that to be the standard. Any more than we want the standard to be if you smoke pot once and it comes out and you get caught, you're ruined and you cannot – have any sort of public life and you can't be elected to any public offices and you can't be trusted with children because everybody smoked pot and everybody now carries around a porn production studio in their pocket known as a phone and everybody communicates with their friends and lovers and tricks and acquaintances and people they want to fuck uh, via text and that sometimes includes dirty, dirty pictures. So it's heartening to see how well Anthony Weiner is doing in the race in New York, although I'm not taking a position. I'm not endorsing Anthony Weiner. Um, Christine Quinn is also running for mayor of New York. Uh, and she is, of course, a lesbian and I am uh, obligated under the terms of the International Homosexual Conspiracy to not harm, if not, of course, help her race for the mayor's mansion in New York, however you say that. Uh, so I'm not taking a position, but I am heartened by how well Wiener is doing in New York and that he's facing this slut shaming down. And yes, men can be slut shamed and indeed Wiener was. But Spitzer – Spitzer broke the law, just like David Vitter, senator from Louisiana. He broke the law too. He was patronizing prostitutes. He was making calls to set up dates with escorts from Congress, from the floor of Congress when he was a representative and that all came out when he was a senator and he was the family values guy, right-wing conservative family values, anti-gay because those gay people, they're attacking marriage undermining the traditional family unit like that traditional family unit that David Vitter trotted out in his campaign ads when he was running for Senate and the family values conservative voters in Louisiana, southern state, reliably Republican red state, reelected the bastard, sent him back to the Senate. So he was redeemed post his prostitution scandal and Spitzer is in the third or fourth act of his redemption. He's already been redeemed by CNN and by Current and by Slate and by MSNBC and everybody else and now he is – asking for the voters to redeem him by returning him to public office and it looks like he could win that race which would be, I think, good because I don't think sex work should be illegal. I think, as I've said before, that there should be a system set up to so that people can be certain that the sex workers they're patronizing aren't being exploited or abused or trafficked and also a system set up so the sex workers can be sure that the clients they're seeing are not violent, dangerous assholes, that there needs to be a sex worker registry and a John registry. That's online and unstigmatized and we can bring this into the daylight and make sex work safer for everyone involved, particularly for the women who are the majority of the people out there doing sex work. Uh, I've been thinking about all this again today because there's a terrific and very pointed piece in New York Magazine by Melissa Petro. Melissa was a New York City school teacher, a teaching fellow, a really good one. She had a master's degree in education and she taught art and creative writing at a quote, struggling elementary school in the South Bronx, where we need people with master's degrees and a passion for teaching in the South Bronx, in every public school. But she wrote a piece for Huffington Post uh, a few years ago about having done some escorting, about having been a sex worker for four or five months, this brief period of time. And she wrote about it and was promptly fired. She was sent to the rubber room in New York, as it's called where the New York City school system sends teachers they want to get rid of. Uh, she was shamed publicly by Mayor Michael Bloomberg and really driven out uh, of uh, of her career because of this, because she did sex work. 
And she has this terrific piece in New York Magazine called We Pardon Spitzer But Still Judge Former Sex Workers Like Me. Yes, it's true, Petro writes, I brought this scandal upon myself, but I could have never anticipated the fallout or that my candor would make me a victim in another way. Like Spitzer, I was put on a blast on the cover of the New York Post, then ridiculed in the national press, shamed by the city, including Michael Bloomberg himself. Ultimately, I was forced to resign from a career I loved. After I was fired, I couldn't pay my rent. Even now, freelance writing and the seminars I teach barely pay the bills. Because of the negative publicity, I lost the part-time jobs that had subsidized my teaching salary, and it would only get worse for me. Her piece goes on. You should read the whole thing. Go to nymag.com and look up Melissa Petro. We pardon Spitzer, but we still judge former sex workers like me. Please read the whole thing and marvel at the vicious, sexist double standard that Melissa Petro unpacks in one short and pointed essay. You know, whenever decent people talk about sex workers and their clients, when people who oppose decriminalizing sex work talk about sex work, Female sex workers are always portrayed as victims in need of rescue and male clients are always portrayed as criminals in need of punishment. But it is always the male clients at the center of prostitution scandals, big public ones, guys like Spitzer and Senator David Vitter who are welcomed back into public life and given second chances. Spitzer gets that show. Spitzer gets drawn for comptroller. Vitter gets reelected by family values, voters in Louisiana. But the female sex workers – who were outed or came out in the wake of scandals like Spitzer's and Vitter's are not given any second chances. They're ostracized. They're condemned. Vitter keeps his job. Spitzer gets new jobs. And the escorts they quote-unquote victimized are persecuted and punished for the rest of their lives. Such bullshit. We have to stop pretending that criminalizing and stigmatizing sex work is about protecting women if this is the way it's going to work. Because it's about punishing women if this is the way it works. The proof is on the front page of the New York Times right now. Spitzer is winning that race. And Melissa Petro and those escorts that Spitzer patronized, they are losing. It's some sexist fucking bullshit. Go read Melissa Petro's piece, newyorkmag.com.